Hello, I'm Roger Sheely, rangeland weed ecologist with the Agricultural Research Service and the Eastern Oregon Agricultural Research Center, and I'm here to present an Eastern Oregon Ag Minute. Muhammad Ali was a pretty inspirational guy. I laugh when I think about what he told the young lady reporter interested in why he fights. He said, grass grows, birds fly, waves pound the sand, I beat people up. Unfortunately, grass doesn't always grow, or at least it doesn't always grow very well. Hay production is down a lot this year. Hot early spring weather with intermittent hard freezes really made growing grass and alfalfa difficult, not to mention no May rain. Last year we got four and a half inches of rain in May. Most places didn't get any May rain this year, and pasture is scarce. Top that off with the fact that hay reserves statewide are down. And faster than Muhammad Ali's right hook, hay prices have gone through the roof. So I thought this week it might be worth talking about a few ideas that might help in these droughty hayless conditions. I think you'll be surprised about how much hay is actually wasted during haying and feeding processes. And tomorrow, I'll discuss methods to keep from wasting your hay. Since your winter feeding program is likely your single largest ranch expense, reducing hay waste can save you money. It'll be important to cover your hay this year. Outside storage can account for up to 30% of the dry matter loss in the stack. Hay losses at feeding on most ranches averages about one-fourth, but can easily approach half. One major loss occurs when animals have access to a lot of rake bunch hay at a time. Much of the hay is used for bedding and used for toilet paper rather than eaten. Good electric fences can be used to isolate animals into smaller areas so they eat more hay than they ruin. It's also estimated that feeding on the ground wastes up to 45% of the hay, so feeding in bunkers this year might be a way to get more hay into the animal. At these prices, it may pay to make some feed bunkers. Seriously dry conditions, lack of pasture, and high hay prices may increase the cost of producing a calf too high for many ranchers, even in a relatively strong market. This might be a good year to consider weaning and culling cows early. Some folks are thinking about feeding pretty soon. If you're trying to stretch your forage this year, weaning and culling now rather than later may reduce your forage use and help you hit a better market with your cull cows because you can sell them before the cattle supply at market increases. Early weaning can help the cow's body condition stay higher because the nutrient demand for lactation is removed. Removing the calves from the pasture could increase forage availability to the cows. Another advantage is that calves are removed and fed a highly nutritious diet. This will improve their performance and quality over calves mothered on poor feed. These programs should be considered carefully because special calf feeding programs can be expensive and they require a lot of labor. If these hay prices stay high, we're all going to have to seriously consider alternative feed sources. Many of us use low-quality forage such as rye or bluegrass straw and supplement it with a little high-protein alfalfa to make sure to meet the nutritional needs of gestating cows. If harvested at the right time, which is right now, Russian knapweed has a lot of protein. Last year, Dave Bonart and I harvested some Russian knapweed just before bloom, just as if it were hay, and we fed it as a winter feed supplement with fescue straw to cows. After 84 days, the weight and body condition score of our cows were the same as those supplemented with alfalfa. If you feed your Russian knapweed as if it were alfalfa hay, the winter might feel just a little shorter. Another way to shorten winter is to borrow money in the fall that comes due in the spring. In that case, I promise the winter will fall short. This week I've been discussing ways of keeping your hay and feeding cost as reasonable as possible because hay is scarce and expensive. One final alternative is to consider grazing your crested and or tall wheatgrass pasture longer than normal, even on into the winter. Crested and tall wheatgrass are very tolerant to grazing, and fall grazing can actually remove some of the standing dead crop that prevents rapid regrowth in the spring. And occasional heavy grazing in areas where older decadent plants exist can actually be beneficial to plants 
if the grazing occurs when the plants are dormant, like in the fall. Animals tend to avoid these plants in the spring and favor the lush new growth. This may be a good year to force them to eat some of the older plant material. Since their consumption rate will decrease, supplementation with a small amount of high quality feed will be required to maintain good body condition. I'm Roger Sheely. Have a great weekend.